1993 was a big year. From culturally significant events like Canada's first female Prime Minister and the Queen opening the doors of Buckingham Palace to the Great Unwashed for the first time, all the way to groundbreaking inventions that would shape the future like Dyson's first bagless vacuum cleaner, Intel's latest microprocessor, and perhaps most importantly, the introduction of these. Oh, beanie Baby. I've got a house full of these things. This one I call S&P 500. Hello, invest in America. <laughs> to be clear, I have got children, I'm not weird. But when it comes to investing, there was one other major event in 1993, and that was the launch of the first ever exchange traded fund, or ETF for short. And as you can see from this graph here, they have increased in popularity massively over the last 20 years or so. So in today's video, let's answer the question, what is an exchange traded fund? Hello everyone, my name is Tom Morgan from the YouTube channel That Finance Show. I'm a UK-based, fully qualified financial planner and advisor, and I'm today coming to you in collaboration with the good people from Trading212 who want to help you get smarter and better when it comes to investing. Remember, nothing in this video should be construed as financial advice. In order to explain the nature of exchange-traded funds, or ETFs, we should start by defining exactly what a fund is. A fund is simply a way for investors to pull their money together in a big old pot to buy lots of different types of assets with. It's a great way for investors to access investments they'd otherwise struggle to choose from, and a bigger pot means that you can invest in lots more different types of assets, therefore increasing your diversification and lowering your risk. But it wasn't always this way. Cast your mind back to a time before funds. You've got some spare change you'd like to invest. Well, what are your options? You would have to research any investment you wanted to make yourself. Analyzing company stocks, balance sheets, cash flow forecasts, gross profit margins and PE ratios. Or if you wanted to invest in something different, a commodity like oil, for example, how would you even go about doing that? The average investor needed an alternative solution. This solution and where this story starts is with the mutual fund, which is the first time that investors were able to pool together and buy into a variety of assets in order to reduce their risk and increase their diversification. Back then, these funds were actively managed by a fund manager whose job it was to select what assets to hold in the fund in an attempt to deliver a market-beating return to you as the investor. They were pretty pricey too. You could be paying anything up to 2% a year for the privilege and unsurprisingly meant that most fund managers drove nicer cars than their investors. Mutual funds are valued once at the end of each trading day and are only bought into and sold out of at this point too, when all investors' instructions are pulled together and processed at once. And they do remain a very popular option for investors to this day. Moving the story on a little, Jack Bogle of Vanguard fame, in a reaction of being sick to death of overpriced, underperforming mutual funds, launched the first ever index fund, which is a mutual fund at heart, but instead of having a fund manager driving around in his flashy car actively picking stocks, it would simply track an index, like the S&P 500, for example, and deliver market matching returns for a much cheaper cost. And as this graph shows, this passive investing style is getting more and more popular every year. Roll forward a little further and we get to the topic of today's video, the Exchange Traded Fund, which is still a diversified collection of assets, like a mutual or index fund, but with one key difference. It's actually bought and sold like a stock on the stock market. It's traded on an exchange, hence the name. So these are not just priced and traded once a day. Instead, their value goes up and down as they are bought and sold throughout the day. So ETFs are in fact listed shares that give you as the investor exposure to some underlying asset. The easiest way to remember is that the definition is in the name itself. They are funds that are traded on an exchange. Seems like a subtle difference from a mutual or an index fund, doesn't it? So why is this important? It's important for two main reasons price transparency and liquidity. As the price is updated in real time as the stock is bought and sold, it's a much more accurate reflection of its fair value 
rather than waiting for a mutual fund to update its price when markets have closed. Also, having an ETF that trades like a stock means they can buy and sell whenever they like. They don't have to wait until markets are closed. And this means they know the price they are getting much better. ETFs tend to be mostly passive in their style, tracking indexes, like an index fund. And this also means, like an index fund, that they tend to be a cheaper way to invest than a mutual fund. If you look on the Trading212 app and on the home screen, scroll across the top until you see ETFs, you'll start to see some of the available options here. And to prove the point, look at the top two, Vanguard S&P 500 ETF and the Vanguard FTSE 100, both passive index tracking ETFs. ETFs have nicknames, or ticker symbols as they are known, to make it easier for you when searching around. The Vanguard S&P 500 fund mentioned there is VUSA, or VUSA, and the Vanguard FTSE 100 fund is VUKE, or VUK. There are other types of ETFs though, some that are sector specific, rather than tracking a whole entire index. Say for example there's a particular sector that you're interested in investing in, but you don't want to research all the individual companies to choose from, then you can just buy that sector as a whole. Maybe you don't like the fact that the S&P 500 is made up of around 40% financial companies and you want to diversify into some other sectors. You think of a sector, you can probably find an ETF tracking it. Healthcare? You got it. Industrials? Yep. Energy? Of course. Beanie Babies? Ah, you got me there. There's no ETF that I can find tracking Beanie Babies. Mm. So diversification, check. Reduced risk as a result, check. Trade when you like, check. Cheap, check. What's not to like? Well, seeing as the vast majority of ETFs are passive investments, if you're someone who wants to try and beat the market with an active investment strategy, then most ETFs aren't going to be for you. That being said, however, there are now active ETFs with fund managers choosing investments, trying to beat the market, so there are options for you. There is also a question on how well some of these ETFs actually track their indexes, because they don't always track them exactly. This is something called tracking error. Essentially, the performance of the ETF is different to the underlying index that it's tracking, meaning it hasn't tracked it as effectively as it should have done. The S&P 500 goes up 3% and your ETF only goes up 2.8% as an exaggerated example. In most cases, tracking error on an ETF is only slight and it's usually caused by the fact that the ETF might not hold exactly the same as the index it's tracking. Perhaps they only hold a portion or a representative sample of something like the S&P 500 and not all 500 businesses. This problem is not unique to ETFs, any fund tracking an index can have this issue. Some argue that the ability to trade more regularly throughout the day is actually a bad thing too, as it encourages more trading, which on the whole usually leads to worse performance. A little bit of self-control can help with this one. Another pitfall that sometimes people fall into with ETFs is all around currency. You should be trying to buy the ETF that you're looking for in the same currency for where you're based. As a UK investor, I want my ETFs to be in Great British Pounds where possible. Otherwise, I've got to compete with currency and exchange rate risk at some point in the future, which is quite easily avoided. Take this for example, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. VUSA is in Great British Pounds and VUSD is in dollars. Exact same fund, denominated in different currencies. One to look out for. Anyway, if you don't mind, I've got some really important research to get back to. Thanks. Give the video a like if you learned something. I hope you got the answers you came here for. Please remember to subscribe to the Trading212 YouTube channel with notifications turned on so you don't miss any future uploads. And if you're already using the Trading212 app and you're feeling really kind, you can head on over to the App Store or Google Play where you can leave up to a five-star review to let others know just how good you think the app is. Until next time, my name's Tom Morgan from the YouTube channel That Finance Show. I'll see you on another video real soon. Bye for now. Bye.